Um, thank you all for attending this webinar, this training for the Prince officers and board members for our new medical marijuana licensing management system that we're looking to go live next week. Uh, it's a very informative session and it's being recorded so for, for, for future references. Um, throughout the process and the training, there'll be an opportunity to comment. If you type in your comments, we'll have other team members who can answer those comments in the, in the chat. Um, but this is an opportunity to provide us with some feedback, ask questions, and if you have some good ideas on how to improve the system, don't be afraid to bring those up as well. This system will be um, built on in the future, and hopefully we can continue to enhance it to meet everyone's needs. Um, thank you, and enjoy the next hour, about 45 minutes. Great, thank you, Tom. All right, so um, I'm gonna kick us off today, and before we get started, I'll, I'll do some introductions and things of that nature, but just a couple of quick housekeeping items. As you are coming into the chat you'll or into the room, you'll see that there is a chat room. Um, that is where we'll do our communication, as Tom just mentioned. Also, please keep yourselves on mute. We are muting as you come in. It just helps with the sound and the quality of the call. So um, please keep yourselves on mute. We will make space throughout the presentation to ask questions. Mm -hmm. We're going to direct those to the chat. It makes it a little bit easier uh, for managing those questions. So please do leverage that and we will take breaks throughout. And then also at the end, we'll close out the session with allowing time for any questions we didn't get to throughout the session. So <clears throat> with that, I'm going to go ahead and get us started with a quick overview of who you have on the call today to support you. Of course, you know, Tom just kicked us off. We've also got Megan Whitby here to support as well from all of the medical marijuana expertise that she will bring um, to support any questions that you guys have or anything you want to know about the, the program and the system. Myself, my name is Gina Feda. I am leading the change management efforts for this project. Megan Wagner will be conducting the training or the demo for the most part. And then we've got Adam Canova, who's a solution owner and also a subject matter expert that can also help support with questions. Uh, you will, there will also be some other folks from ADHS on the call that are monitoring the, the chat. So uh, just know that we are hoping to make this very interactive for you and the fact that we're hearing you, but we will be just going through a demo and um, making sure that we set you up for success for what's to come next week. A little bit about our agenda. I'm going to go over an overview of the MMLMS system. So basically just an infrastructure of how the system was designed and what you might need to know about the architecture of it. Architecture of it. Um, the facility licensing portal is the demo piece of the session. So you'll be getting a good look at the POBM functionality as well as the DA functionality. I'll also talk a little bit about the new renewal process and some things that will still need to be done in the legacy system. We'll talk about next steps and resources that will be beneficial to you so that you're ready to go next week. And then of course, um, we'll close out with some more questions. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about what brought us to where we are today. If you are not aware, I'm sure most of you probably are, but back in 2000 or 2010, about 10 years ago, the voters passed Proposition 203, and that's how we came upon AMA, the Arizona Medical Marijuana Act. And over the last 10 years, we have been evolving um, medical marijuana in the state of Arizona. And as of last year, as you're probably most familiar with is Senate Bill 1494 that passed that brought us to where we are today and all the things that we're working on with the electronic cards that went live back in December. And then what we're doing now, the release that's happening next week is the next phase of that. So first we went electronic and now we're releasing all new functionality to you so that you have a lot more information at your fingertips, uh, portal access with new functionality uh, for patients, caregivers, dispensaries. Um, so uh, we're, we're gonna cover all of that today. This is still the beginning, lots of evolution to come with the system, more releases, more functionality will come over time. And our goal is to keep you informed 
and um, keep you in the know of anything that will help you run your business. So a little bit about that system overview, how it was designed and what was taken into consideration is you guys. So customer care, we wanted to make sure, and this goes in it, uh, for patients and caregivers as well. So dispensaries, patients, caregivers, uh, create a simple and easy to use application that is almost self-serve for patients so they are able to get a lot of the information that they would normally call ADHS for and also provide more insight and efficiencies for you. We also did it with employees in mind at ADHS to help eliminate some of the manual processes and make things more efficient for them and with providing more customer care on the outside it makes everybody's lives a little bit easier um, all around which brings us to this next thing, the 360. So a holistic system where everybody has access to this similar information that interacts. So it's ADHS, it's dispensaries, it's patients and caregivers all working from this central hub of information. And it really gives a 360 view into the whole entire medical Mira process and system. And then finally, future focused. So this is the start of a lot more to come for functionality purposes. What we're releasing next week, we will continue to build upon. As Tom mentioned, we welcome your feedback. We want it. We will make sure that we continue to evolve and refine the system so it, it reaches its full potential for what makes things more efficient for you. And then also within ADHS, there's more licensing systems that will come on as well after medical marijuana. So this is the foundation of how the system was designed. And then a little bit about the architecture of the system. So it's made up of three portals, the individual licensing portal, the facility licensing portal, and the card verification portal. All of these three main hubs are part of the medical marijuana um, licensing management system. And as I mentioned, all of these different individuals can interact as a result of that uh, based off of the information internally and externally being exchanged and um, hoping to uh, create a more smooth business process. And then one final piece of this, just to help with clarification of roles and how that interaction occurs, I want to direct your attention over to the right with this, with the, the picture here. You'll see where it has individual licensing and facility licensing. Individual licensing is what your patients and caregivers are going to be using. That's how they get access to their card. That's how they apply for cards. On the, that's on the front end. On the back end, internal ADHS employees, our customer service representative team, they're the one processing everything and fielding phone calls and supporting patients and caregivers. If you look at the facility licensing side there on the right, this is what's most applicable to you, where on the, uh, external or on the external side of the portal, you'll see all the different folks that will be using the system and all the functions we're gonna get into today that you'll need to know about that. And then internally at ADHS, these are all the folks and employees that are supporting those processes um, to run the applications and support your teams. So one thing that is important to know about these portals, and we've shared it before, but we're going to continue to share it again because it could be the one thing that creates a problem, um, is the, the account. And if you look at over here on the left where it says a person has one account, um, I know that there's been a lot of outreach to dispensaries. We've for the most part, I think managed this, but a reiteration as we go live next week of the importance. So uh, the way that your login information works in this portal is a person does have one account, which is their username. And a person's username equals their unique email address. So this is why all the effort and energy was put into making sure that any shared emails were cleaned up so people could have their own individual login into the system. There were some patients sharing, maybe family members sharing email addresses and maybe DAs within dispensary using the dispensary email address. And so 
the significance of this can't be overlooked because we want everybody to have their own individual login. So if you have any folks in your dispensaries that still don't have a unique email, you'll be hearing from us as we're continuing to do any outreach of um, anyone else that's, that will need to have that for next week. And just something to move forward um, knowing that this is an important part of being set up in the system. One more thing to note about that is that there are people with multiple functions. So you can be a, the POBM, um, a DA, and also a patient and caregiver. So if that's the case where you wear multiple hats, you still only have one unique email address and one portal username or one login. Um, your information stays the same, but you just have different portals you're logging into for that functionality. So that's also important to know because sometimes people get confused about that. Uh, do they need a different login information for their different roles? And they do not. So we can talk more about that as we go through the demo and Megan's going to explain that when she talks about the login process, but just wanted to make sure to reiterate that here so there are no issues next week. And then finally, if you aren't aware where all these portals can be accessed, so currently out on the ADHS website on the medical marijuana homepage, you'll see that top green box. This is where all the portals can be accessed, the individual licensing facility and verification portal. And then down there in the bottom green box is where currently you will find any supporting resources, job aids, any FAQs, things to support you. Uh, as we move forward, you'll see a little bit of change with this of how we're organizing information for you so you have access to additional resources. Um, and Megan will also talk a little bit more about that as well. So that is my piece on really just covering the, the architecture of the system, the background of how we got to where we are today. And I'm gonna go ahead and pause for a moment, see if you guys have any questions, and then I'll turn it over to the demo. If you do have a question, please make sure you put it in the chat. Okay, perfect. So Kim, Kim's in the chat monitoring it. Doesn't look like we have any questions yet, but please feel free to use that as you think of them. And even if we don't respond right away, we will eventually get to your question, I promise. All right, Megan, are you ready? Oh, yes. You know, we do actually have a couple questions that just came in. <laughs> we sure do. OK, so we'll go ahead and pause for a moment and take these questions. So where is the unique email coming from is the first question. So the unique email is the individual's unique email. It comes from them. It's their it's their personal email. It's whatever email that they're using to log into the account. Anybody want to elaborate on that? OK. Perfect, thank you. Um, then we've got another question. Do we know the official lunch date next week yet? Yes, we do, Ricardo. So the official target date, we're using the word target because it's a sensitive environment right now and we're monitoring it every day. Um, but right now we are targeting Wednesday, June 3rd. And we'll talk a little bit more about what's gonna happen between now and June 3rd so you guys are set up for success. Perfect. Okay, Megan, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to you. All right, thank you, Gina. Uh, as she mentioned, my name is Megan and I will be taking you through the uh, training for the next hour and a half here. We'll be walking through the facility licensing portal. We'll be wearing our POBM hats this morning. So this training is targeted at the POBMs and the POBM functionality that will be within the portal and the system and seeing just the different features and functionality that you will be able to access on a day-to-day -day basis. We will also be able to look uh, at what a dispensary agent would see in their portal, and we'll have a little bit of an overview of that as we close out the training um, this, this morning. So with that, uh, we will just give a little bit of an overview of uh, some of the information that we think is important regarding browsers. So we have found with the new system that it acts and plays a little better and um, acts a little nicer in some parts of this, uh, in some browsers than it does in others. So the supported browsers that we are recommending that will uh, provide the best user experience, have the cards and links and every, everything display correctly and properly would be the, um, 
browsers of Google Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. And then the unsupported browser or the browser we kind of just want to stay away from as it doesn't act and play as nice as the others is Internet Explorer. If you are using Internet Explorer, it will still work. It just doesn't show everything uh, as it should and it's not as clean and crisp. So from here, I will take over from Gina. And we should all see my screen starting now. And from here, I will just give you a, a little bit more of an overview of the website and just how we get to this link to begin uh, looking at the facility licensing portal. So I'm sure you all are familiar with the Arizona Department of Health Services website. And just to show you kind of the best path that we've found in order to get to the links and the, the facility licensing portal link that's important for you, we would go to topics here and hover over that, scroll down to medical marijuana, click on that. From here then we are brought to this medical marijuana homepage on the ADHS website. You can see on the left hand side we have all of the links and additional pages. So from here we have the individual licensing portal and the facility licensing portal. Obviously the facility licensing portal is very important to us today. So this is where we would click to be brought into the facility licensing portal to be able to log into that. One more thing to note before I do that is uh, we will be adding, as Gina mentioned, an additional page over on the left here in the top, top section that will uh, help you provide additional excellent customer service to the patients and caregivers that do come into your dispensaries, as it will just give more information and details around job aids, FAQs, um, any additional information that will help them work through this new change and navigate through their new portal. We also will be posting um, some dispensary agent videos for training, and we will also be sending you those links. So those will be um, accessible on this website here for the dispensary agents so that they're also able to uh, learn about the new system. We have up here this call out section and this red box up here. These will be changing in the next week or so as well. They will just be identifying new uh, updated information that we believe is important for the patients and caregivers to see so that it will help you do your jobs and uh, serve customers better and be able to sell more marijuana and process quicker as the patients and caregivers are more informed as to what they need to do. So from here, like I said, if we click on this facility licensing portal link, we're brought into the facility licensing portal. I'm sure you all are aware of this as you have been able to access this system and log in here. One thing to note is this blue login bar. This is the system and the page that obviously I said we're currently using. It will be changing to look just like this in the future. So once we push this new um, functionality and uh, push this live next week, you will see that the page that you log into is updated and it will look like this. So for our training purposes today, let's pretend we clicked on that link and we're brought to this page instead of this page. All right, so just an overview of this screen before I dive into more detail of the actual facility licensing portal. You'll see here we have the logo at the top. This will bring us back to the home page. We have the ADHS home, the about and contacts, just additional links in the top right that we can click to view. And then we have the login section of the screen. We can see the login information uh, it requires an email address and a password before clicking login here. Remember, as Gina mentioned, that the email address is a unique email address, one email address per person, but that can be used and should be used between both portals. So as Gina mentioned, if you are a patient or caregiver and also a dispensary agent, then you would have one email address and password that you would use for this facility licensing portal, as well as the individual licensing portal. No need to switch passwords in between, click forgot password, nothing like that. We'll just be using the same email and password for both the facility licensing portal and the individual licensing portal if we do wear multiple hats and have different accounts. So from here, um, if I forgot my username or forgot my password, we can see these links at the bottom. We're able to click those and the information then is sent to the email to reset the password or um, username. We also then have this button in this link down here that says don't have an account, sign up here. Now this is important because we will need to have, like we said, accounts created for each person. So that means if I'm a POBM and I have a new dispensary agent that I am hiring, they will need to create an account 
with their unique email address and provide me with their email address before I am able to apply for the dispensary agent card for them. I will go through that in more detail in a little while, but we can show right here what this account setup will look like. So if I click on the don't have an account sign up here link, I'm brought to this ADHS facility licensing portal create account screen. So here you can see that the legal first name, last name, phone number, date of birth, and email address are required for entry to create an account in the facility licensing portal. Once you verify the CAPTCHA here, and then you will um, be given the button that says create account, where then the link will be sent to an email to validate the email address and create finish creating the account with um, a password. Like I said, this is important as every person will need to create an account if they do not have one. So from here, we can see um, that today I will be putting my POBM hat on. I will be acting as George Smith, a POBM for multiple dispensaries, and we will be able to look at one of my dispensaries and walk through my portal as a dispensary POBM. So from here, I would type in my email address and my password before clicking login. And once I click login, I see that we're brought to this facility licensing portal home screen. Just to give a little overview of this screen before we dive into any uh, specific sections, once again, we have the uh, icon and the logo in the top left. This will bring us back to the home screen if we click on it. We have this ADHS facility licensing portal uh, title that will appear on all the screens. And then in the far right corner, we have the profile section. It will show my name, George Smith, and it will show this person icon here. As you can see, if I hover over this, it is a clickable section. If I do click on the name or the profile icon, I will be brought into my profile pop-out. So here we'll see that there's a couple links at the top, my facilities portal, and the logout button. If we click my facilities portal, it will bring us back to the home screen here. And if we click logout, it will log us out of the portal. Uh, an important thing to note here is that this is the only place to log out from the portal. You must click into the profile and click log out to successfully log out of your portal. If you click X, you'll exit out, but the only way to actually log out of the portal, like I mentioned, is clicking the log out button in this profile section. From here, we can move into the profile details. We can see that it shows the first and last name, phone number, date of birth, and email address. That was the information used on that create account screen. So this is where it appears and is shown. In this top right section of this profile details area, we can see this pencil icon. If we click on the pencil icon, it will show if there are any editable fields. As you can see here, the phone number and the email address both highlight in red. That shows that those are able to be edited from this profile section. So if I wanted to change my phone number, I could go in here, change my phone number. I could also change my email address here. And if I change my email address, I would be prompted to um, verify that email address with new email address uh, in the new email that I receive from this reset. From here, if I change my phone number like I did, I would like to save that information. I can then go back to where the pencil icon was and it becomes this red check uh, box. From here, I'm able to click the circle and it changes it. And you can see my phone number is now updated and saved. Red highlight goes away and uh, it now becomes the gray boxes that are no longer editable. From this section, we can also change our password. If I click this change password button, I will be sent a, requ a request will be sent to my email address to, to change my password and I will have to uh, do it from there and then be able to log into the system with my new password. Also on this home screen, we have the My Facilities and Other Facility Information sections. I will go through the other facility information and then I will pause for questions. So if we do have questions, we can start entering those into the chat. So now on this Other Facility Information section, we can see the Medical Marijuana Facility Licensing tile that appears just below. If we would like to click on this, we're able to view of the information and applications associated with medical marijuana that I'm able to complete. So here we see multiple pages for instructions and different forms that can be filled out, as well as different attestations that could be filled out that I may need to attach to any applications. If you click on one of these, 
you can see here that it's just brought into an additional tab and it opens that up where I'm able to download or print it, um, whatever is necessary to complete it. You can also see the application section down here. We have the initial laboratory registration certificate application. This is an application that I could use to apply for a laboratory. And I could click this and go through filling out the application from my portal here. We can also see this application status tile. If we click on the application status tile, we will be brought to application history for any applications that I have submitted from my portal. So as the POBM, I have to submit all of the applications for my employees. And we can see here that I uh, submitted a replace lost stolen card application for one of my employees, Teresa. And it was approved with the status date and it shows that in this application history file. All right, as I mentioned uh, before moving on now to this My Facilities section with the dispensaries, I will pause for questions here. Do we have any questions regarding the initial logon, the account creation, or this uh, profile or other facility information sections? Megan, there was a couple questions in the chat, but both Dan and Kim answered them. Um, so I think we've got the questions answered. The only thing that's really relevant here, I think, for the, the um, this section is the timeout. So just to reiterate this one, because I think it's worth mentioning, um, the timeout used to be 10 minutes, and it has been up to 30 minutes, and that was um, done as part of the feedback we received from from you guys of wanting more time there. So that is definitely um, a nice addition, I think. And um, as Kim mentioned in her response, we will get into um, the, okay, there we go. Um, <laughs> um, Megan will get into that timeout piece when we get into um, the, the card search and sales. Okay, thank you, Gina. Yes, yeah, definitely worth noting. Uh, once we do get into the portal here and we log in, as we see our login uh, username sorry, our login name, and our profile section here, we will stay logged into this portal, as Gina mentioned, for 30 minutes. That will be a little different from the card search and sales section that I will go into more detail in a little bit. So from here, uh, we can move into the My Facilities section where we can see any facilities that we are associated with. So um, as George, I am associated with dispensaries, so that's why I have the medical marijuana dispensaries tile that appears. If I also was associated with any laboratories, I would have an additional tile that would appear right here that would show laboratories and it would show those associated uh, facilities for the laboratories. From here, I can click the medical marijuana tile with the dispensaries to move into my dispensary information. As we can see here, it shows my dispensaries and then it shows my facilities with the facilities that I am associated with from a dispensary aspect. So we can see here that I am associated with two dispensaries. They are Joint Effort and Last Dance Dispensary. Now either one of these I could click into and view the information for that dispensary. Today, for our training purposes, we will be working within Last Dance Dispensary. So from here, I will click on the tile for Last Dance Dispensary to be brought into this portal for Last Dance Dispensary. You can see here, this is an important note, that the dispensary name appears on the right side of the page. You can see here, Last Dance Dispensary shows. This will show on each page as we navigate through this portal. It's important because we know that a lot of you work with multiple dispensaries, you have access to um, a lot of those, and you have multiple facilities. So being aware of what dispensary you're currently working in or what facility will be helpful, and you'll make sure to view this um, so that you're doing business within the appropriate area. We can also note here that the card search and sales is the screen that this defaults to. So once I enter the dispensary that I uh, clicked on and I enter into this portal section here, we can see that card search and sales is the first tab that we default to, as we believe this is where you'll be spending most of the time within the portal. And this is the most important screen as it's where you're able to do business, log sales and complete transactions. So from here, I will not go into more detail on this yet. We will come down uh, and work through this left menu as, as we walk through it. So I will start with the home screen. From the home screen, we can see once again, as I changed the tab, we can still view the dispensary I'm associated with. 
So I'll just always um, make sure to note this so that I'm currently working within the appropriate area. At the top here, we see this announcements section that appears in red. This will be any announcements that, that the uh, department would like to post so that you're able to see them once you enter into your portal. If we move down here, we see the notifications section. This will be any notifications that come uh, with any updates. As you can see here, this was an application update. We can see that the replace lost stolen card application was approved, shows the submitted date and that it was approved. If you would like to exit out of any of these tiles or remove them from the notifications section, all you'll have to do is simply click this X in the top right corner and, then our not and the notification will go away. Here, if I click this, we see that the notification is removed. I acknowledge that, yes, I saw it, great, cool, it's moved, we don't see it anymore. Now this bottom section is the message ADHS section. This is where we can send messages directly to the department. Um, this is not the only way that you're able to communicate. We know that you um, have phone numbers or you have uh, the M2 dispensary uh, email address that you use as well. So you can still continue to use those. We also have um, enabled this feature here with the messaging so that you are able to use this if this is the easiest way to communicate for you. To show this, we can just select any type of category. We can just show the subject in the description. And then we can send the message by clicking the red bar at the bottom. Once I click that bar, we see that the message was sent. It says your message has been submitted. The appropriate EDHS department will respond via email. So we see here that my message was successful. It was sent to EDHS and I can click continue here if I would like to be brought back into the messaging screen. All right, now we move into the My ID card section. I know you may be familiar with the home and the My ID card section. Just a quick overview, like I mentioned, um, for those that are not. So we have the My ID card section where we can view the current card. We have the uh, name of the person that the card is associated with. So within my portal of George Smith, I can see my card. I also see the title for this card and the type of card that it is as a dispensary agent card. I also see the um, dispensary that I am associated with, Last Dance Dispensary, listed below as well as the address and the issue and expiration date of my card. I also have the barcode down below here, as well as my card number. This barcode is obviously scannable. We have the card history that's located on the right here. It just once again shows the card ID, as well as the issued and expiration date for this card. The important feature to note here would be the download PDF button that appears at the bottom here. If you would like to, for any reason, download the card, whether it's to print, save on your desktop, uh, quick, easy access to the card, you're able to click this download PDF button. Once I click that, you'll see that my card is downloading. And once it's downloaded, I'm able to click on that PDF that was downloaded and view my card in an additional tab brings the card open, I'm able to then print, uh, save, anything as I mentioned that I would like to do with the card here. All right, now before moving into the card search and sales section, do we have any questions regarding the home or my ID cards tabs? Yes, Megan, we had a few questions come through and they were answered, but for anybody not monitoring the chat, I'm just going to reiterate them for you. Um, so the question was, are they still able to use their log, same login information that they currently use in the new system? And thank you, Kim, for answering that. The answer, or, um, Dan, the answer is yes. Um, you can still use your same in information that you're using today, as long as it is your unique email and all is working well for you. Um, the other question that came in was around the messaging feature in the home screen. And so Megan did mention this, but I want to reiterate it as well, that it is not intended to completely or entirely replace the M2 dispensary email. Um, that's the question, is this tab replacing any M2 dispensary email inquiries? So, um, and Megan Whitby, if you want to add to this, please feel free. Um, you can still use those email addresses and phone numbers. This is intended to be another way to communicate. And ultimately, the intention is that you know, we would like to get folks using this feature, but during the transition, obviously you have uh, your ways that you're currently communicating that those aren't being eliminated at the present moment. And once an announcement is removed, will it be accessible in a log somewhere is the final question. 
That is a good question. I'm going to defer that one to Dan or Adam if they know. Get this to go off mute. <laughs> yes. um, so while we do store it, it's not accessible anywhere here within the portal. So uh, if that's something you'd like, then feel free to submit that as an enhancement request. OK. Thank you, Adam. All right, that's it for the questions, Megan. Okay, thank you, Dina. All right, now we will be moving on to the card search and sales section. As I mentioned, uh, we do believe this is one of the most important screens as this is where you'll be doing all of your business. And this is where you'll be able to help the patients and caregivers uh, and dispense marijuana to them. So from here, as you can see on the top of the screen, we see the title of card search and sales. We can also locate our dispensary name on the right to ensure that we're doing business in the appropriate space. From here, we see the patient caregiver search and ID number section, as well as the uh, search bar here that we're able to enter that ID number into. So from here, if I would, um, I'm George Smith, like I said, I am a POBM, so I am able to dispense marijuana. I have been talking with a customer in my store and she is ready to check out and purchase marijuana. So I will scan or enter her card ID. I scan it, here it appears. I can click search then to search for the appropriate card ID. Once I click search, you'll see in this top right corner, we have this timer that starts. It starts at 15 minutes and it will count down to zero. Once we click zero and hit zero from there, the screen would cancel out and I would have to re-enter patient ID information in. One thing to note though here, once this clock hits zero, it will log you out of this section. It will not log you out of the portal completely. So I will still be logged in as George Smith, but what would happen if this hits zero is it would cancel out and the screen would just return to this original search screen. So from here, once again, I typed in my number or scanned my number in. I clicked the search button. And here I'm able to view the patient, Maggie, who I have been working with this morning. I verify, yes, this looks like Maggie. I see her uh, name. I see the type as well as the card ID here. And I also see the status for the patient. Here it shows in green text that she is active. Her card ID is active and she is able to purchase marijuana. As I scroll down here, I also see that she has remaining allotment in both ounces and grams. So once again, I can in fact dispense marijuana to her. Before I continue, I'll bring you up to this section again up at the top right, showing the countdown clock. As you can see, we started at 15 minutes and we are still counting down. If we do hover over that, it shows here the message that you will have 15 minutes to complete logging this customer's sale in the verification system. If your time expires before you complete the sale, you will have to start again, just as I originally showed. So now back to Maggie. I'm working with Maggie. We're um, talking and we have figured out what she would like to purchase. We figure out that she uh, would like to purchase marijuana. So I head to the sale details now of this uh, patient caregiver section. I click this drop down located in the type section. I see that there are three options here, marijuana, editable, or other. Now these are the same options that you're currently using. So whatever you would classify as other, that's what you'll still continue to do in this system. Same with edible as well as marijuana. You'll continue to use the current processes you are using. You're just classifying it and looking at it in a different and new system here. So from here, like I said, Maggie would like to buy marijuana. So I choose the type of marijuana and I enter in her appropriate amount in either ounces or grams. As we do this, it will convert from one option to the other. So I work in grams in my dispensary here. So I would like to note that she is buying five grams of marijuana. So here you can see the purchase total purchase amount will update in both ounces and in grams what she will be purchasing. If I continue my conversation with Maggie, and I notice that she would also like to buy an edible, click this plus button over here, where I then am brought to an additional line item. If I continue to click the plus button, I would be brought more and more line items down on this page. I'm able to enter all of those transactions in. So from here, like I said, Maggie would like to buy an edible and make an edible purchase. So I click edible, ed <laughs> I click edible from the type section here. 
And I choose once again in ounces or in the gram or in grams what uh, she will be purchasing. Like I said, we work in grams in my dispensary. So I enter three grams here for her edible purchase. We can then see the total purchase amount updates once again, and we view it in ounces and in grams. Now Maggie is all set. She would like to check out and she is finished with her sale. From here, I can click the log sale button. Once I do this, you'll see that I get this message right here that says sale logged successfully. That shows that the transaction was complete and the sale has been successfully logged. Now, one thing to note here, if I click start new sale, that does not clear the patient out here and start a new sale with the new patient. This only will start a new sale with the current patient that I have appearing in this section. So I will show you here, clicking start new sale, will just bring the sale details back up for Maggie. If I would like to start a new sale with a new patient or caregiver, I will have to click the cancel button to end Maggie's session and start over entering a new patient's ID number. So like I said, Maggie's all set. I would like to cancel out of her to start with a new patient. I click cancel and once again, I am brought back to this patient and caregiver search home screen. So now I have the next customer in line that I am ready to help. Her name is Melanie, I'm talking with her, and I scan her card number or enter her card number in, and I click search. So from here, once again, Melanie's picture appears. I can see her name, I can see the card type, as well as the card ID, and then I can see her status here. It's, it once again shows green and active, as well as her remaining allotment in both ounces and grams. We can see here, clock has reset now that I've entered a new patient and we're able to start from 15 minutes again with this new patient. If the screen does cancel out, if you're doing business with a customer and the uh, sale and transaction is taking longer than 15 minutes, you do have information in here. As we can see here that I just entered, but you do hit zero, it will not log the sale, it will automatically cancel you out at zero. As you can see here, once I enter back into Melanie's profile information, you can see her remaining allotment has not changed. So that sale that I had typed in, not clicked log sale yet, had canceled out because I timed out of this system. One thing I did mention, and I'm going to note again, if it does time out at zero here, it does not mean that it logs the DA or POVM out will just be entered into the patient caregiver search screen again. So from here, I'm going to continue with my transaction with Melanie. We've been talking, I've been providing great customer service with her. I'm clicking through, I'm talking to her, and I enter in uh, any of her information. I'm clicking through the sale, I click this, and I log the sale. Before I do this, I'm going to note that you can see here, this is a sale with a violation. We're not trying to uh, encourage violations here. We are just simply stating that we know that uh, violations can happen, mistakes can happen. Um, if you're providing great customer service, things like that, and you're walking through it aimlessly clicking, sometimes things like that happen. So we're trying to prevent that by giving you multiple pop-ups and uh, notices, but we know that uh, the system will not prevent you from actually logging this sale. You can, fix this sale later, and I will show you how to do that in the sale history section. So from here, you'll see that if I am trying to log a sale with an allotment violation, I get this message that appears at the bottom that says allotment violation detected. Please confirm amounts before continuing. Now that will occur as soon as you put in an inappropriate or uh, an allotment violation amount into this sale details section. Once I clicked log sale, this is when this pop-up appeared and we'll get the log sale with allotment violation message. This message, as you can read, says the total purchase amount entered exceeds the patient's remaining allotment. You'll have to either cancel or log the sale. So here, if I wanted to just continue with the sale, I could click log sale, but I will get one more pop-up, as you can see, and one more message that says, please confirm before continuing. So we have this acknowledgement, this checkbox here that must be checked before we can continue with the sale. So there's one, this message down here, 
two, this pop-up that appears, and three, this checkbox that must be checked, that must be all selected and must be viewed, three warning messages that you receive before being able to log this allotment violation. So here, we'll click log sale. And as you can see, the sale logs successfully even with the allotment violation. Like I said, we're not trying to encourage this, but we understand that mistakes do happen. So we're showing that yes, violations can still be logged. From here, you can see though, the remaining allotment goes from 2.5 ounces down to zero, even though she purchased three. We don't go into negative here. We just show that nothing is um, able uh, to be purchased anymore and there's no remaining allotment. So now here, uh, I'm done with Melanie's purchase. She is happy that we sold to her. And now we uh, move on and I will be uh, helping the next customer in line. But from here, I view the next uh, person's card information and I enter their card number in. I click search. Oh, and I notice that I received this message. Here it says patient and caregiver card ID not found. After five failed attempts, the patient lookup functionality will be disabled for 10 minutes. And then it shows the remaining attempts with a countdown here. So as you can see, I typed the card number in wrong here. It will give me this message and it will tell me if I do this incorrectly five times, I will be locked out of this functionality for 10 minutes. So here, once again, I enter the card number in and I'll click search. Okay, it worked and I did not enter it incorrectly. I did enter the card ID correctly this time. But we can see here for this patient, her name's Chrissy. She is a patient with a qualifying patient ID here, but her card status now is listed as inactive. We saw before that the uh, card status showed as green with active with the photo for patients that I was able to sell marijuana to. Now here, Chrissy's card shows as inactive and it shows her remaining allotment as zero, showing that she is not able to purchase marijuana. I also get this disclaimer at the bottom saying that dispensary agents may only sell to patients or caregivers with an active patient card, as you all know. So here I can see Chrissy's card is inactive and she's not able to purchase marijuana. So I um, have Chrissy leave the dispensary then and she's not able to complete a sale. You cancel out of this and I return to the patient and caregiver search screen. All right, that was a lot of information regarding the card search and sales section. Do we have any questions there before I move on to sales history? Yes, we do have a couple of questions. Um, it looks like, uh, Kim, thank you for all of your responses in the chat. So Kim's been monitoring and answering, um, so I won't, I won't cover everything in here. Um, but the most recent questions are, um, where did it go? Will only the electronic DA cards be available in my ID cards, or will those DA cards that still, or will those DAs that still have physical laminate cards expiring in 2021 be there as well? And then a follow up to that, meaning are those DAs uh, physical cards converted into electric cards in the portal? Yes, so, they will have access to both cards then. Okay. Um, so Amy, let us know if that answers your question. And the other question that I'm gonna defer this one to Megan Whitby because I, this one came up yesterday as well. So I think you had a great explanation for this of why would it have the ability to log more than the amount allotted? Thanks, Tina. Uh, again, we do not encourage using that functionality. It's just a matter of we have seen instances in the past where a dispensary agent logs an allotment against the incorrect patient allotment or another error occurred where it didn't get allotted until after the patient left and they were reconciling their own um, inventory later and realized the mistake. And then we want you to continue to be honest with us and put the allotments into the system as required by the AMA. So, that patient could have gone to another dispensary in the meantime before you caught the mistake and they could have purchased something there, thus pushing your sale over the allotment. We know that that can happen. It's not an override that you can do, so you can um, purposely uh, give a patient more than their two and a half ounces every 14 days, but it's just in case an error does occur that you can go ahead and log it into the system. Great, thank you, Megan. 
Um, one, one other question, will the card search and sales area log out in 15 minutes or only while in a patient transaction? So, and if you're looking at the screen now, she is on card search and sales and she is not in a patient transaction. There is no countdown clock, so it will not log out. It would only be the 30 minutes of inactivity in the portal. Um, however, if you were in, you had a patient pulled up and you were attempting to log a sale, at that point, it would log you out. And then one question around uh, maybe a recommendation, would it be possible to color code inactive, lost or stolen cards indicators in red so it's easier to decipher for VAs, um, green means go, red means stop. So great suggestion, uh, thank you, Zach. Okay, I think Anything that's it. Else? Okay. Great questions, you guys. Um, thank you for asking those. Please continue to ask the questions in the chat, like we said, and providing those enhancement uh, suggestions. Those are great too, as we will be noting them for future releases and seeing what's possible and what will work. So moving on here, uh, we will move to the sales history. Now, as you can see this tab on the left, I'm able to click that once again. We're brought to the sales history page. Once again, I can see the dispensary that I'm currently working in to ensure that I'm doing business in the appropriate place. In the top section here, we see this search and this drop-down section here. In the search, we are able to search different functionality or different, um, different types of information that is listed below. So if I wanted to search for a specific employee that had sold marijuana, I could search for Bobby. And these would list all the transactions that Bobby has made. I could also search for, say, a patient, a purchaser. And so if I wanted to search for Brian L, it would bring up all of Brian L's purchases, and we would be able to see the uh, purchases for him in order. From here, I also move to this drop down that shows all of the statuses. So as we can see here, we are on the default of all sales. If we move down, we move to the purchased, corrected, voided, or violations statuses that can be selected. If I do select one of these, you'll see here that it does filter accordingly based on this voided status. From here, I will return to all sales. And we can also see that it shows the number of records found depending on what you're searching here. So here we move into the um, details and the information section of this page. We have multiple columns here, and I will go through and describe each column before walking through the information on how to edit transactions. So first we see the sale date column. From here it shows the date that the sale was made as well as the time. As you can see, this was the sale that we just completed. From here we can also see that we can uh, sort or filter by these columns up or down here with this arrow, and I'm able to, able to filter by the uh, furthest date or the uh, closest date to me right here. Also note that the sales history will show 60 days worth of sales history for this dispensary. 60 days of sales history. So after the sale date column, I will move into the employee column. We can see here this was the employee that made this sale. We have George and we have Bobby. From here, I can move into the purchaser column. We can view the, per the person who purchased this marijuana or made this sale, sorry, the purchaser who, the person who made this, uh, this sale and purchased the marijuana or edible or other type. We view their name as well as their patient ID here. The next section we move into is the quantity. It shows in both ounces and in grams what the person was able to purchase. And from here, we move into the final column of status, which shows, like we filtered on up here, which status the purchase is in, whether it's purchased, as we can see here, voided, corrected, different types of statuses there. If we hover over the information button, we can see that transactions with an allotment violation will be flagged with a red dot. So here you can see this red dot that's listed. This shows that the purchase had a, an allotment violation. Now, in order to correct this allotment violation, we could see here that this pencil icon appears. The pencil icon ap will appear for any transactions that have occurred within the last 72 hours. 
Transactions that have occurred within 72 hours are transactions that are able to be edited. If it is um, older than 72 hours, if it has occurred before 72 hours ago, it will no longer show this pencil icon as the sale in the transaction is no longer editable. So right here you can see top three transactions have occurred within the past 72 hours, so they have the pencil icon. But all of the rest of my transactions here have occurred uh, outside of that 72 hour window, so I'm no longer able to edit those transactions. Now here, this is the sale that we just made for Melanie, and we realized that it was a mistake, and it was in fact a violation, as is listed by this red dot here. So in order to correct this violation, I would click the pencil icon here. From here, we're brought into this pop-up that shows all of the sale information. Once again, we see the sale date with the date and time. We see the purchaser who purchased the marijuana, Melanie, and her qualifying patient ID number. And then we see the status of this transaction, which was purchased with the allotment violation. From here, we move into sale details. We can see that it was a marijuana type purchase. And the amount here, we can see, oh, it was three ounces listed, and we meant to actually only type one ounce. This was a mistake on our end. So from here, if I wanted to correct this allotment violation, I would simply change the sale number in here. Once again, it converts it from ounces to grams. And you can see that red message that showed that we had the allotment violation goes away once I correct the sale. So once again, we had the sale at three. It showed this red message saying allotment violation detected. Please confirm amounts before continuing. Once we corrected it and changed it to one, the appropriate amount that we sold, then we will see here the allotment violation message goes away. Now, on this bottom section here, we have multiple options then. We can either confirm the correction, void the sale completely, or cancel out of this if we didn't mean to come in here. If I canceled it, we would just return to the sales history screen. If I click to void sale, which I will show you in a minute on another transaction, we will have to select the void reason, which would either be invalid transaction or another reason. And then if we um, select the confirm correction, up down here, we can see that the correction reasons are listed as either marijuana amount corrected, edible amount corrected, other amount corrected, multiple amounts corrected, or other. So from here, I would select my correction reason for correcting the sale as I just did. You can see here that it was a marijuana amount corrected. So I would select the marijuana amount corrected box. And from here, it automatically saves the sale as we can see, it changes the status to list it as corrected with the reason that I just selected as marijuana amount corrected. So scrolling down here, like I said earlier, we could see the voided transaction and we could see um, an example of the reason that was selected for the void transaction as invalid transaction. So Brian's sale here was completely voided and this purchase no longer um, is there. All right, that's um, an overview of the sales history. Do we have any additional questions here? So there was a couple of questions that came in. Um, Kim, Kim is, again, helping to monitor those. And I think a, a handful of them are around the DA functionality. So we will also be getting to that after the POBM functionality. And you'll probably get a lot of those other questions answered. Um, most recently here in the chat, uh, we did confirm a few of their questions around um, uh, can only a POBM void or correct a sale? And yes, that is the case. Only POBMs can void and correct the sale. Um, we'll get into what visibility and functions that the DAs have access to. Um, also, Stephen asked if we'll be recording this training and will it be available to go back and review? And yes, absolutely. We are recording it and we will share the link out with you. And Last question. So transactions are not required to be edited at the time of sale, but can be edited within 72 hours after is the question. Yes, you have up to 72 hours to confirm um, the transaction before it is no longer able to be edited. And this is Megan with ADHS, just to chime in. You still need to follow the dispensing rules. I just want to clarify that. The sale should be locked in the verification system at the time of dispensing 
the marijuana. However, this tool is just there in case an error is caught within the first 72 hours. Then the principal officer or board member can go in and correct that error. But yes, you're still required to allot the medical marijuana dispense at the time of sale. Great clarification. Yeah, if you catch it, <laughs> correct it in the moment. That's it, Megan. All right, thank you all. Okay, now we will move on to the applications and application history section. After those two, I will pause for additional questions. So keep that in mind, please. So moving on to the application section, I will select applications here. We can see once again that we're brought to the application screen. We can see the dispensary that we are currently doing business in here. We're brought to facility applications and employee applications. Now, one thing to note before I do get into more detail here is some of this functionality will be coming in future releases. So we um, currently have some that are still paper processes, um, but we just have the information within this portal here. So those will be coming in a digital and electronic format in the near future. So uh, please be aware of that, that some of the functionality is uh, not completely developed yet. So from here, we can see the facility application section with the dispensary information update form tile. If I were to click on this, this will be one of the examples as I just talked about. It takes me to this update form that is still a manual process that I have to fill out uh, either on the computer like this or uh, printing it and filling out. This is not an electronic form yet, so we're working on that and that will be delivered in the future. Here we move into the employees application section. Now these two have been developed as um, applications that are online now and we are able to work through them electronically. So if I click on the dispensary agent registration application, this is what I would use to apply for a new dispensary agent to my dispensaries card. So once I click here, we can see that we're brought to this medical marijuana dispensary agent registration application section. Here, the agent username and email address is requested. Now, this is what I talked about at the very beginning of this training. And I said that all DAs, new DAs to the um, dispensary then, would need to create a new unique email address if they have never used this before. Now, if they are a dispensary agent that has previously worked at a different dispensary, and now they're coming to work at your dispensary, they would still be able to use that portal that they already have with the username and email address there with the password, and they would be able to provide you with that email address, and then they would be able to log in once this application has been approved, and they would see your dispensary tile that now appears in their portal. So from here, as a POBM, I would need to ask for the new or the email address that is associated with my new employee's um, account. I would enter that email address here. The email validation would occur, and then I would enter into this dispensary agent registration application. Now the next part, if I go back, once again, you can see here as clicking back, brings me back into this card search and sales screen. As like I mentioned, this is the default screen for this portal. If I return back to the applications tab, we can see here once again in the employee application section, I'm also given this additional tile here that says dispensary agent renewal application. Now, one thing to note here, yes, this can be clicked and completed from here, but there are also two more locations within the portal that you will be able to renew a current dispensary agent's application. That doesn't have to just be from this application section. We do have two additional spots. So from here, if I would like to renew their application in this section, I can click the dispensary agent renewal application tile. And I'm brought into this medical marijuana dispensary agent renewal application. You're all familiar with these. Like I said, with a lot of this, um, it's not new fun it's not new information. It's just a new way to process it. So from here, we see the user agreement. We're able to download the application instructions if necessary. We're able to see the items that must be included in this application, as well as review that uh, we consent to receive notice the legal jargon here and then we move to the agree and proceed button once i click this an application number will be generated and i will be able to begin my application for renewing this dispensary agent application here if i back out once again brought to the card search and sales screen as the default 
and move into applications, we can see that these are the additional tiles uh, with the functionality that has been delivered for this dispensary. And like I said, it will be updated in the future uh, to include dispensary information update form that is electronic. Now we can move into the application history section. From here, we can see the application history page shows a search bar as well as a drop down that appears at the top. So uh, first thing to note here is the facility related applications is the default on this page. We see the application type, applicant name, submitted and status that would appear. These will not li be listed right now for any dispensaries that uh, any facilities that have not applied online. So obviously we won't show any history for this because we haven't rolled this functionality out where we're able to make updates to the facility um, electronically. Once we do, the application history will start to show here. What we can see right now though, is the employee related applications. So here I went and selected this dropdown. I'm given these two options. Once again, facility related applications or employee related applications. If I select this employee related applications section, we can see that I'm brought to all of my employee related applications. So we can see the application type for this application. We can see the applicant name, so who I applied for. We can see the date that it was submitted, and we can see the status of the application. As you can see down here, this does show when this application was approved versus submitted for this replace lost stolen card because this was completed with the electronic replace lost stolen card application. From here, if I would like to search something, say I would like to search for um, an applicant name. From searching for Teresa, I can enter her name up in the top and it will start to search as I, it will start to populate as I am typing the letters in the top search box. So we can see here that it shows uh, results for Teresa. Okay, I will pause here for any additional questions before moving into the last section of the POVM section. Uh, yep, we have one question and Kim just, actually we have two, sorry. So um, the one question that came in that uh, from Sarah is, can we create a new email for employees if they already have one? All our employees have a company email. And the answer to that is yes, absolutely, um, you can, and, and that would be recommended. However, keep in mind that if they are also a patient, they should use the same email that they're already using because they only need one email address. So. Um, just keep that in mind when you're thinking about unique emails. And we have another question. Are we able to change update emails for employees that have a registered email that was used at a different location once they apply for a new dispensary? Might be confusing if the domain names have another dispensary name on their email when they work at a new one. So for that, um, in this profile section here, you are able to update the profile information. So we could change um, the email address here associated with the profile for the login. Hi everyone. So the dispensary agents, they have to already have an account for the medical marijuana system before you can submit their application. All they have to do is tell you, yes, I have a username and give you that email address you will not see anything about them. You won't see if they've had patient cards, caregiver cards, if they've worked at other dispensaries. All you need to know is that they've registered for the system and they're gonna give you that email address. So that'll be important to stress to them that it doesn't mean you're gonna have any kind of insight into any other previous cards they have or their, their history. Um, but for their sake and the sake of the system, they do need to have that one username that they're using for both portals if they, need access to both portals. They need to have that one email address that they're using for every dispensary that they're working for. Um, and it, it's easy for them to navigate it that way. And it also helps ensure that the system and all of the data in it is correct and all together the way it needs to be. Great. Thank you, Megan. If I can just make sure I drive home the point that when they're signing up for a, an account, it should be a personal email address. So that's not specific to your dispensary or another person's dispensary because this is their login for the ADHS portal system, regardless of dispensary, whether they work for a dispensary, a lab, if they're a patient, if they're a caregiver, or any of the other programs that we add later. This is just their general 
personal login to the to their the portal system. So they should be using a personal email address in case they um, you know stop working for you and go somewhere else or do something else in the future. Um, if for some reason their email address is uh, already specific to a dispensary because uh, of the old system and we're auto creating people right now, um, they can always log into it and um, do what what Megan showed earlier, where they can uh, update their email address. So, for example, if right now it is specific to a dispensary, they should go in and update it to a personal email address. Um, so, but uh, yeah, for any net new where you're having to make them create an account, um, encourage them to create one on with their own email address. That's great. Thank you, Adam. Um, we do have, if there's any other questions on that, please, please do send them through. We did have one question around historical information. So this is more about um, data migration. I think, will there be historical information on, on applications or just as the, since the system went electronic records? So are we bringing over historical applications? I will defer to Adam Mordan or we, we are bringing over. So the, the data retention policy is three years. So we are bringing over three years worth of data that includes cards, old cards, expired cards. It includes applications, uh, et cetera. Perfect. So to reiterate what Adam said there, three years of history will appear. And yes, it will be uh, any applications or history that has occurred before the electronic system as well. And I believe we captured everything. So back to you, Megan. Perfect. Thank you all. Great questions, everyone. Uh, now we will move into this last tab within the employees portal. Remember, we're still looking at, at this from our POBM uh, perspective, wearing our POBM hat today. And uh, we will look at it from a dispensary agent perspective in a couple minutes here. This is all the functionality that is only available to POBMs. We will see a little bit of functionality, which uh, will be these first three tabs, that can possibly be available to DAs, but it does not have to be. So once again, I'm going to keep my POBM hat on right now. I'm still George, and I will be looking at my employees uh, within the employees section now. So here I go and I click on the employees tab. I'm brought to this employees page here where I can see all of the information regarding my employees uh, associated with Last Dance Dispensary. So here, once again, at the top, we, we see the search bar here, as well as this drop down. So to search here, I could search by um, different information like I have been doing. So here I could search by an employee name, say Joe, and I could see any uh, employees named Joe would appear. And then if I wanted to uh, filter here by any of the statuses, if I, click on the drop down here, I can see that it shows all statuses, active, expired, revoked, or void as my options for filtering. If I searched by void, if I clicked this, it would filter then by only void cards where the void cards would appear. Now I will reset this to all statuses so we can see all of the information here for my employees. We can see that I have five line items. It shows records found as five here. And once again, I will go through the columns and uh, talk about what each one is. Here we have the employees section. This will show the employee name as well as the employee date of birth. From here, we move into the card ID section. We can see here that it shows the card ID as well as the type of card associated with this person. We then move into the status field, which like I showed, <coughs> Excuse me. Like I showed here, we have um, different statuses that are available. So we have active status as this with the expiration date for the card. We then see this UFR, which if we hover over this um, information button here, we can see that UFR stands for up for renewal. And that is cards expiring within 90 days. So here we can see that if, an, if a card is in fact up for renewal, this red dot will appear and it will be the flag marking this application as up for, sorry, marking this person as up for renewal. Their card needs to be renewed within 90 days. Then we move into this last access column. 
This will show the last time this person has accessed the facility licensing portal. So here we can see the NA shows that this it's not applicable for this person. So they have never accessed the portal. We know that some of your employees don't access the portal. Maybe they work in cultivation sites or um, different things like that. So this will show if they have or have not accessed the portal here, as well as the date and the time that they have accessed if they did in fact access the portal. So as we can see here, moving back to this UFR for the up for renewal, if I hover over this uh, button here and this little dot for the flag, you can see that I'm able to select this. This is one of those spots, like I mentioned, where we are able to be brought to the renewal application. So if I clicked on this dot, it would bring me into this dispensary agent renewal application. Just like I went over before, it shows the exact application where we can then agree and proceed to continue with it. If I go back and back into the employees tab, I can see then that there's also these pluses that show. This will expand each employee section. And once again, if I click here, we will see that the uh, additional information appears and I'm able to make more selections and do more with this employee. So here we have these two uh, toggles here that will show for agent card ID access and card search and sales access. These are associated with the fields and the pages that are on the left-hand screen the left hand side of my screen here. As you can see, the agent ID card access shows their ID card and the card search and sales access shows the card search and sales feature. So these can be turned on or turned off for each employee depending on which access you as a POBM would like to give them. So today I've given access uh, for Joe to his agent ID card so he can view his ID card in his portal, but he cannot view the card search and sales screen. He does not have access to that. So I could turn that on for him. And we could see here that both toggles then would be displayed as red, meaning he could see the home, my ID cards, and card search and sales options. I could turn both of them off if I would like. And we can see here that Joe will no longer have access to any of these. So he cannot see his ID card and he cannot see the card search and sales screen. Now we will show you too um, in a little bit with DAs what they're defaulted to right now as well as what they will de be defaulted to in the future. It is important to know here though, you must come in here and turn these features and functionality on to the red display here instead of the gray if you would like to turn them on. If they are off, they do not have access to these within their portal. They must be turned on to be viewed. So now from here, we have additional uh, items we're able to click on and additional things we can work on from this portal section. So I will also go on to another employee here to show a different example. We can see here from Bobby that his agent ID card access as well as his card search and sales access have both been turned on. So Bobby, the dispensary agent of my dispensary is able to see his agent ID card as well as the card search and sales section. So from here, if I wanted to download Bobby's card, if I wanted to view his card as a POBM, say I turned the agent access off for all of my employees, I could still download their cards as they are required to have them. I could click download agent card. And you're going to see here, Bobby's card is now brought up just like it would be with the My ID card section. We can see all of the information as it would appear. And then we're able to click this download PDF button. So once again, if I clicked that, it would download a copy of the card here. And I'm able to save that card uh, to my desktop, save it in a folder wherever I would do um, something with that, or print the card if that's what I choose to do. I'm going to X out of this and return back to the employees tab. So from here, that was downloading the agent card is what we saw. We can also report the stolen card. Now we understand that electronic cards, it's a little more difficult to have a stolen card. Uh, what we mean by this is if there's any uh, suspicious activity that's occurring within a portal, if the card was printed and lost and we believe that it might have been compromised, anything like that, um, you'd be able to report the stolen card here. And then you uh, would be able to pay the fee as you currently would in the system. And then uh, you would receive the new card ID number from there. The last option here for uh, the normal 
DA would be to terminate the employee if I no longer had this uh, dispensary agent working at my dispensary. So from here, I could click this terminate employee button. And what would happen was this pop-up would appear and it would ask me if I would like to void the card with the number here associated with this dispensary agent. So it would ask void card of Bobby. It shows me here, it's Bobby's name with his date of birth, as well as the last time he accessed the portal. So he accessed the portal two days ago. And I could say, yep, I do want to in fact void Bobby's card and terminate this employee. So here I would have to select both of these check boxes, acknowledging that you're initiating the termination, as well as the fact that reinstatement requires a new application with a $500 fee. As soon as this terminate button is clicked, the card would then appear in the void status, as you can see from Sam, right down in this bottom section here. So Sam was terminated, his card now appears as void. One more thing to note, I did mention when we were in the application section that there were three ways to get to the renewal application for dispensary agents. And the last way would be by clicking the plus here. So we had the option if the employee was up for renewal by either clicking the red dot here, clicking in the applications tab for the renewal application, or clicking um, in this with the plus button, clicking in this section below where it says renew agent card. If I clicked the Renew Agent Card button here, I would be brought to that same renewal application that we have seen and fill it out from there. So one more time, just to reiterate, if we see uh, the agent card, agent ID card access and the card search and sales access, the toggles must be turned on or off to give our dispensary agents access to these fields or not. All right, any questions here uh, over the employees section before I move into uh, what it would look like from a dispensary agent's perspective? We have one question that was answered, but I do wanna reiterate this because it's an important one. And it's the, the visibility within the two different portals. So the question was asked, um, will a POBM have access to the employees, DA, or their employees, um, qualified patient or caregiver cards. And so the answer to that is no. There, These are two different portals, the individual portal and the facility portal. So you will have access to see the employee information, but not their personal patient information. However, if you are uh, someone who is also a patient, then you will be able to view your own information by going into that portal. Even though both portals are part of the system, the information isn't shared in that way because the patient information is, is protected. So um, Megan Whitby or anyone else wanna elaborate on that or share anything else around it? No, I think you covered it. So the dispensary principal officer or board member will only be able to see the dispensary agent information for the dispensary agents for the, that particular dispensary. Great. Okay. That's, that, that came up yesterday as well. So I did want to make sure that those who aren't monitoring the chat, the chat got that answer as well. And that's it. Great. Thank you, Gina. So from here, um, this was an overview of the facility licensing portal, like I said, from the POBM perspective. So remember, the facility licensing portal can be viewed by a dispensary agent or a POBM. It will just look different depending on your access. So from here, we will now move into an overview of what it will look like in the portal from a dispensary agent's perspective. So I will have Gina share a uh, PowerPoint. Yes, ma'am, hold on. And, all right. All right. So from here, we're going to view um, a couple different scenarios and see, like I said, what it looks like in the portal from a dispensary agent's perspective. So from here, we have option one. Now these will be, just to reiterate once again, the screen options for the dispensary agent. If you decide to turn on or turn off different functionality within the portal for them. So here we have option number one, which would be just viewing the home screen. So as you can see on the left-hand side of this image that we uh, placed in here, it only has the home tab. 
the My ID cards and the card search and sales tabs do not appear, which means this dispensary agent, Bobby, he does not have access to any of those uh, features. He only can view the home screen. Now, one thing to note is that this will be the default permissions for DAs approved after 6.3. So any new dispensary agents after we go live with this new system will automatically be defaulted to both of those toggles appearing as off. So those dispensary agents will need um, that functionality turned on by a POBM in order to view the card search and sales and the My ID card section. From here, we move to option two. Option two is viewing just the home screen and the card search in sales access screen. So this would be the current default permissions for DAs that you currently have enrolled and that are current DAs of your dispensary. So the, the card search and sales um, access has been toggled to on for them. Now this was done to ensure that you have a seamless transition transition and that you are able to continue doing business and that you don't have to mess around with turning all of those uh, toggles on for your current and active dispensary agents. If you would like to turn them off, you will be able to do that, but just note that they will be defaulted to on for any current dispensary agents. Moving on from here, we see option three. We have the home screen as well as the My ID Cards tab here. So this will show as the My ID Cards tab and we will not have access to the card search and sales tab here. So this dispensary agent would just be able to view their ID card as well as the home screen. And the toggles will have to be turned on or off like I've mentioned for um, the card search and sales or if we would like to turn off the My ID Cards access. And then the fourth option would be uh, the complete option for dispensary agents. This is the maximum amount of information that they could see in their portal. And this would show the home screen with the home tab, as well as the My ID Cards tab and the card search and sales tab. As you can see, anytime that card search and sales does appear in the portal, it is the default screen. So well, this was done to make it easier as this card search and sales screen will be the most used screen for dispensary agents. So they'll be able to come directly into this screen uh, and into this tab once they log into their portal then. All right, so those are the dispensary agent uh, screen options that we can view. There's four different ways to uh, turn on or turn off those toggles to have the dispensary agents view whatever you as a POVM would like them to have access to. Are there any questions on this section? There's a couple that came through. Uh, the question of since the target go live date is next Wednesday, do we have access to this now so we can begin to update employee access? I think that question came through before we shared the next option, which is that we have turned on all access for you. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that for go live, but then you would have to afterwards. And when I say all access, sorry, card search and sales access. So you don't have to worry about that one. So let me know if that doesn't answer your question, Amy. Um, once you terminate the employee in the portal, does the card show voided, inactive, or active when the employee logs into the portal with their login? So, um, Kim answered, but let's get confirmation, I believe, Kim. Yeah, Adam, Adam, would you be able to chime in on that one? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Yes. Um, once you terminate the employee in the portal, does the card show voided, inactive, or active when the employee logs into the portal with their login? Once the employee logs in. So if the so yeah, if you're if you, as a POBM you terminate the employee, it will show as void on your side. But then when the employee logs into their facility licensing portal, what would they see as their My ID card section? No, it shouldn't be there at all. Okay. They won't even be able to view their card. Yeah, it's not active. Okay. All right. Adam, will the history be viewable though? Or that's not there? Yeah. From, from the POBM perspective, yes, Kim, the history would, but from the employee perspective, they would not be able to see anything in their portal besides the home screen. All right, thank you for the clarification. Yes. That is a good clarification. 
Okay, and then finally, uh, if a DA has multiple DA cards, how do they choose which dispensary they are working in? And um, Kim answered this question, so thank you, Kim. That uh, Megan covered it. Um, when a DA logs in under the medical marijuana tiles, it represents which dispensary they're going to choose. So at the very beginning, they can choose which dispensary they're going to be logging sales in and um, working in. So one thing, good clarification, Gina, and one thing to note here is, as you can see on the screen that Gina is currently currently displaying, in this top right, it shows last dance dispensary. That's the dispensary that the uh, this card search and sales then and my ID cards would be showing for this patient if they would like to go view their other dispensary. So joint effort, as I was showing, I would have to click on that joint effort tile and then I would only be shown information for joint effort or only be shown information for last dance dispensary. Great. Okay. Are there any other questions on dispensary agent functionality? All right, and we're going to move on. That covers the demo piece. So thank you, Megan, for all of that good information. I am going to go ahead and take over from here and talk about the renewal process and the legacy system. So as you're probably aware, we've shared a couple of communications on this recently with the uh, new renewal process. We'll talk about that. But there are still some functionality that must be completed through the legacy verification system. So even though we are launching and going live next week as our target, um, we do still have a couple of things that you'll be using the system for. And those things are any in-process DA application. So if there is a, an application that's currently in process, there is an NOD or an RFI against it, there's something you're working through with that application, it will need to be finished out in that old system we are not transferring those into the new system. Anything new that comes in after from a DA application perspective would be done in the new portal. So that's one thing that you'll be using the legacy system for. And then the other is the new registration um, re renewal that came out last week, that launched last week for any dispensaries that were up for renewal this year in 2020. So this process was effective as of May 20th. And so what is the process now? There are directions that were emailed out to all the POBMs as well as the instructions for this are on the website. So if you if you need to go back and look at that or you still have a renewal coming up, if this impacts you, then you do have that information of how the process works. But at a very high level, it's a hybrid version right now where you're still going to access and download your forms from the legacy system. And then you'll follow the steps that you normally would and upload them into the new facility portal. You will also be able to make your payment in the new facility portal. So those are the actions that you'll still be using the legacy verification system for currently. Eventually, you won't be using it for those items, but for the current state, that's where we're at. And Megan Whitby, is there anything you'd like to add? I think that was great. Thanks, Gina. All right. Any questions around this? Okay. Then we are going to move on. We're almost done here. We want to talk a little bit about next steps so you guys feel prepared and ready and know what to do for June 3rd. These items on here are recommendations that you do prior to June 3rd. So within the next week, we have three major things that we think will help set you up for success. First one is sharing the DA training video with your DAs and ensuring that they watch it. This will help them understand what their functionality is and what it looks like. So the training that we put together today is for you and all of your functionality. We've created a, a training video that covers the DA functionality. It's a really short video that covers everything Megan talked about with card search and sales and accessing their card and, and um, allotments and going over allotments and things like that. So they will have a short video that they can watch and we will be sharing out that resource along with several other resources um, I'll talk about on the next slide. Today, after the sessions, you'll be getting an email with resources to support you between now and, and June 3rd. 
In addition to this, we have we do recommend that you have all DAs go in and test their logins in the portal prior to go live. And this is just to ensure that on June 3rd, there are no issues with them getting into the portal and being able to log a sale. The last thing that we want to happen is for your business to be disrupted or for there to be frustration and they're not able to get in. Um, granted, those things are, are known to happen here and there, but everything that we can do to prevent that, we'd like to do. So um, we'll be sending out that information to you as well, just to make sure like that they can go in. We'll let you know when we're ready that they are able to go in and actually test their logins. It's important to know, as we've been saying, that they do need their unique ID established, that they haven't already created an account, they'll need to create an account. Um, and then also, as we mentioned earlier, if they also are a qualified patient, then they'll be using the same information that they currently use as a patient to test their login. They won't have access to view anything in the system yet because we haven't gone live, but they will be able to get in and just see that they can log in. And then finally, the last thing that we recommend doing is reviewing the updated POBM and DA handbooks. Those will also be sent out today. We'll be linking to those. They are not going to be available online until six after 6-2 because we want to make sure that um, we've got our new website. We're waiting on the new website and to share those links out, but we will be emailing them to you uh, with a private link that you can view them ahead of time and what that really is going to help you with is everything that we've covered today is documented in the updated POBM handbook and everything that the DAs need to know is updated in their handbook. So if you want an extra resource, you want to go back through and look through this information, take notes, whatever you want to do, you'll have those available to you. Any questions on next steps? Okay. And finally, resources. So a couple of things on resources. I, I'm, I just mentioned a handful of them. The handbooks will be out there on the website. We will be continuously updating them as new functionality is developed and comes out. So the truth of source, if you, if you print your handbook and you wanna have it on paper, that's totally great. But just know that as new functionality comes out, the latest and greatest will be available to you online. And we'll also let you know when those updates have been made. Um, the DA training video I mentioned, the FAQs that are out there online now, those will be continuously evolving as we go live and as new questions come in and we see that there's value to providing more information, questions that we're getting asked a lot, we'll put it out there for you. We will have a couple of job aids as needs come up for any additional information and then ADHS communications will continue to communicate with you and keep you aware of anything you need to know not only between now and next week, but um, of future releases and functionality. I also want to talk about office hours. So this is something that we're providing next week as if you're not familiar with office hours, what we're what we're doing is we're opening up the phone line for you. So basically, just like now, as we're using this Google Hangout, we will have a period of time on go live day in the morning from 9 to 12, where we're going to open up the Google Hangout and you'll have folks on the phone for you to help support you with any challenges you might experience or any questions that you have. So you'll have representation from ADHS there. You'll have representations from the technology perspective and subject matter experts, as well as from change management um, support. So we will have the line open for you. We'll put questions in chat. We'll have people live, video cameras, whatever we need to do there. But also I wanna note that if there is proprietary information that needs to be shared, if you have a question about a patient or a caregiver and you can't really discuss that in the chat, we're also asking for callback numbers where you we will have an ADHS representative contact you to discuss anything that is personal. But the reason why we've created this and we encourage you to use it is for you for efficiency um, on go live day where there's, and even a couple of days after that, we're gonna have it, but where it makes things easier to get information, fast answers, efficiency, and you're not having to um, figure out how to reach out and get the, the information that you need. 
So we'll have it for an extensive period of time on that first day. And then we'll have it a couple of other days, um, Thursday and Friday as well, just shorter windows as needed. We'll play it by ear. If you guys are using it, it's valuable to you and we're able to support you in a way that that's helpful then and you want to continue into the next week, then we may add a couple of other sessions. Um, if not, we will just discontinue it after those first three days and you can use the normal channels to reach out and get support for the questions that you have. And then of course, ADHS leadership and the project team, we are here to support you um, through this process. So those are your resources that you have available to you. Like I mentioned, you will be getting that email today that recaps this information. You'll also be getting the recording of this training. So you'll have it if you wanna go back and watch it. And then just remember that um, your DAs will have their toggle turned on to card search and sales. So you do not need to go in and do that on go live morning. Um, but anybody new coming on after that, you would need to go in and turn their access on. Are there any questions, anything I missed, anything anybody wants to add? Yeah, there's a few questions in the chat here. I can take those rounds if you'd like to. We have the, where can we find the video to share? Um, Gina just mentioned that one. And so I believe we're good there. It will be uh, sent in the email if we're talking about the recording here. And the DA videos will also be shared and posted online. Um, we also have another question with, uh, will our DAs need to use their login to view the training? They will not need to use their login to view the training. Uh, that will be available via email. Uh, so there will not be a way to confirm that they viewed it through a log. And then we have an additional question that just came in. Uh, are there plans to create API functionality to integrate our POS systems with the search and sales functions? And we're always looking for ways to uh, partner with you and, and make things work better. We are limited by some statutory requirements in the AMA, though, that require us not to link the verification system with other data systems. Um, metrics? I'm not sure what that question means. Oh. Again, we're not able to link the verification system with any of the other POS systems. Oh, it's a POS system. Okay. Yeah, not at this time. Um, we do know that has been a request. Okay, I think that unless there's any other questions that come in in the next few moments, I think that recaps all of the questions we've got for now. So I will go ahead and um, turn it back over to you, Tom, see if there's any um, closing remarks you wanna share. Uh, no, thank you for participating in this. Got some great questions. Um, it'll help formulate some FAQs moving forward as well. And we hope that this is smooth and seamless and we do go live next Wednesday. <laughs> awesome. All right, thank you everyone. We appreciate you being here. Bye.